we have some important news that have to do with big, heavy-duty trucks. Yes, and it has to do with Cummins. And Cowboys, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Cowboys, too. Sorry, um, I'm wearing my eye gauntlet gear because I love big trucks and I cannot lie. But um, this is about Cummins, really, um, and partially Ram. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, but mostly Cummins. And here's the thing. Um, thanks to our buddy C.J. Bowers, who pointed this out just a couple days ago, uh, Cummins published this page, this document on their website that has to do with a gasoline-powered 6.7-liter straight-six engine. They are about to introduce all new tech. Now imagine this. Imagine having an engine block. So you got your pistons, your crank, all that other stuff. But on top, you can sandwich either a head that will run gasoline, a head that can run diesel, or a head that can run hydrogen. That's what they did. Or even compressed natural gas. That's right. All of the above. So they're calling it fuel agnostic engine. Basically, like you said, the base engine is there, mm -hmm. and then you can add different heads and different fuels to it. Uh, but I'm really curious about this because, and let's, let's look at this document together, if you could zoom in here with us. Uh, this is according to Cummins, and... We'll get to Ram in a second, okay? Yeah. But this is mostly Cummins news. Uh, they're saying that their B 6.7 liter architecture platform will be able to produce up to 325 horsepower and 600... 660. That's a big number for a gasoline engine. Well, considering that the current big Hemi that they're using inside the Rams is, uh, what, like 429 yeah. pound-feet of torque? Yeah. Uh, this is a huge... That would be a huge bump if it wasn't a Ram truck, right? Correct, correct. There are a couple of potential downsides, which, which we can discuss. We'll, we'll cover, yeah. Uh, but I, I'm super excited by this. Um, parts compatibility, sure. So if you have a mechanic that used to work on a Cummins diesel engine, they'll be able to work on this engine as well because there's a lot of parts in common, right? That's correct. Serviceability. Uh, this is big. No more DEF. Well, that's a big concern for people right now, right? Right. Now, there was a time, I believe, Ram was running diesels, obviously, before DEF, and I think they were using heat with their catalytic converter or, or, you know, to burn it off. So I'm curious to how this works exactly, but the point in part in here is that no DEF, I think a lot of people would be very happy to see that. Yeah, and it depends on the ap application. So if it's a commercial vehicle, it may have different requirements for emissions rather than a uh, consumer vehicle like a Ram 2500, right? Exactly, and, so, and, and this is diesel once again. This is more when this, this block is also for gas. Yeah, which, which means it's a tough engine block. Yeah, um, which means heavy though. Superior fuel efficiency related to other engines. Uh, they're talking about big displacement V8s mm -hmm. probably, right? Yeah. Durability, refueling simplicity, etc. Um, they also published these graphs, so if you can look at these graphs here, um, as far as kind of horsepower ratings and RPM ranges. So once again, Cummins is known for low-end torque, right, and low-end power, and it's the same here. You can kind of see a couple of graphs. And then they talk about a few applications for this. Uh, once again, 6.7 liters. Um, there is a larger displacement version of this engine, which is available for much larger vehicles, too. Like big semi-trucks, exactly. we can show. Uh, but, of course, they're talking about this engine being tested 2 million miles, so they completed a lot of testing already, and also EPA compliant uh, for a lot of this stuff. And they're saying school buses or shuttles, vocational trucks, recreational vehicles like motorhomes, and pickup and delivery vans. So they don't necessarily mention a pickup truck in this particular uh, segment. Not yet. Uh, but it's still a big question. What is Ram going to do, right? Right. For so 2025 let's, and let's beyond. Let's move to that real quick. So we already know that Ram has a very old 6.4 liter gas V8 that they're using inside their heavy duty Rams. And it is incumbent upon them to eventually get rid of that. We know that because well, they, they're getting rid of all the Hemis. Yeah, and by the way, this image we generated ourselves with Alex and our team used a little bit of magic to create our rendition of the next iteration of the Ram truck. Um, so you're right. I mean, Dodge, Charger, and Challenger no longer have a 6.4. Nope, gone. They're going to Hurricane Inline. 5.7's uh, gone too. Yeah, 5.7 is gone. The Hellcat is gone. 
So most of the family of the V8 engines is really gone in this Stellantis. Right now the Durango is one of the final vehicles to get rid of it and we, we're hearing that it's going to be gone pretty soon. And also the Jeep 392, obviously that one's going away as well. Yeah. So will they keep it just for the Ram Heavy Duty? We don't know. We don't know. Or maybe this gasoline Commons comes into play. Well, that and that's so that's what we're talking about. Now we're talking about a vehicle that will be able to put out a lot more torque potentially, a lot more torque. And so that may compensate for perhaps a heavier engine. Now this is a really cool, by the way, this is awesome because it's showing the three different heads that you can get for the three different types of engines you can make out of the same block, basically. Yeah, and this is in relation, like you said, uh, this is a semi-truck engine, which is a, basically a 15 liter mm -hmm. uh, large displacement engine, but the same methodology transfers to the smaller displacement That's engine. That's exactly it. So just think about this as just a supersized version of it. Yeah. So it's a cool video that Cummins published as well. And actually, I was at the work truck show last year and actually saw a, a natural gas version of the Cummins mm -hmm. with a very similar design. So they're already showing this engine. I mean, it exists. The other thing is, is that in the heavy-duty trucks that currently exist for Ram and that we expect to see in the future, they're already accepting the Cummins six-cylinder engine that's in there now, right? Yeah. What's that displacement? Exactly the same, 6.7. Exactly. So the question is, are they going to take that and just say, hmm, we can just shove this gas engine in there and get basically the same numbers or similar numbers that we were getting from, what, 15 years ago from diesel engines in a gas engine. This could be a huge boon for the heavy-duty truck audience out there that buy Ram products. Could be. They haven't mentioned anything about Ram so far. They have not, correct. And Ram hasn't said anything yet either. Um, and, but the only thing Ram did say is that by the end of this year, 2024, they will unveil some news about the heavy-duty pickup line. And the other rumor is that they may be going with a different transmission. Yes which is the 8-speed ZF. That's the current rumor. There's other rumors flying around before, like Allison and some other rumors. And we but, covered that too, by the and way. The, the, but they're currently using a 8-speed ZF transmission, or ZF, in their Hemi trucks right. for heavy duty. But the rumor is that that's going to be expanded to the diesel trucks and maybe even the gasoline straight six. Well, that would make so, a lot of sense, right? Because one of the things you want to do is you want to condense the amount of components that you're building for each vehicle. So if you have one shared transmission or perhaps one transmission for two different powertrains, stuff like that, you could benefit in terms of your return on your investment. Yeah, definitely. So that could be a huge thing. Um, and yeah, once again, we don't know exactly what Ram might do, but we do know a lot of other delivery trucks may see this engine. Uh, and you know what? The history of a straight six, there used to be heavy trucks with straight six engines way in the past as sure. well. And, and <laughs> so it's, Ford had some, sure. other manufacturers had some as well. And some people are returning to the inline standard because of the good torque you get, because of the smoothness. Uh, one of the things is that I wanted to point out the hydrogen because a lot of people are starting to move towards hydrogen, but hydrogen doesn't necessarily mean going to electrification. It can also mean a different way of powering internal combustion. You could actually burn it. The only, yes, and you know, Toyota has worked on that already. Right. Um, Ram is, and I'm sorry, Cummins is working on this already. Right. And others. Um, there's one couple downsides before we close. First of all, when you're burning hydrogen, uh, even Toyota said this, you, have, you need large fuel tanks because you can't really quite compress it enough to have enough fuel to actually burn it. Right. Um, so that's a negative because you need a large volume and pickup trucks do not have huge volumes. They need to carry cargo, right? That is correct. Also weight of this engine is, could be a negative mm -hmm. because it's kind of built on a diesel technology. Yeah, so heavy, heavy block. But they already carry diesel engines, so exactly. it could be okay. Also price is the final negative. Yes. Because this technology is cool, torque is awesome, but it's still an engine manufacturer that's outside of Stellantis, if they were to use it. Mm -hmm. So they have to pay comments for these engines, so they have to charge consumers for this engine. It could be a premium offering for them, who knows? Not to mention all of the money it's gonna require Stellantis to develop the engine with their trucks. And all the stuff they have to yeah, do for what's that, the alternative? Right? I mean, yeah. they can't use a light-duty engine in their heavy-duty trucks. Right. 
developing your own engine costs a lot of money. Right. But they've had a long partnership with Cummins, so it stands to reason that they would try to continue that. So we're now going to turn it over to you because we're curious to your perspective on this. Is this something that you guys are interested in? Are you interested in the possibility of one block having diesel, gas, and hydrogen, and CNG? It's worth looking into, and we want to get your perspective on it. Thanks for joining us. All of our news is in one place, oldtfl.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next video.